In the last section on SN1 615, we are going to talk about rearrangements. This section is called Rearrangements in SN1. In the SN1 mechanism, when the carbocation is formed in the mechanism, it is possible for the carbocation to rearrange itself to make a more stable carbocation. And in general, you can take it as, as a rule that if the carbocation can rearrange itself to make a more stable carbocation, it just always will do that. So for example, if you produce a secondary carbocation in the SN1 mechanism, if it's possible for that carbocation to rearrange and turn itself into a tertiary, it's going to do it. So let's write down in SN1, a carbocation will, not can, but will rearrange to make a more stable carbocation, if possible. It may not be possible for it to do it, but if it can figure out how, it's going to do it. There's two ways that carbocations will rearrange to come up with something more stable. One way is called a hydride shift. And in hydride shift, you see an H minus, a hydride ion, moving in the molecule to make the more sta stable carbocation. And in the second type, we have an alkyl shift, which if the alkyl group that's shifting is a methyl group, sometimes we'll just call it a methyl shift. And this is where you, the molecule will move an R minus, a negatively charged alkyl group, or in the case of a methyl shift, it's going to be moving a CH3 minus. This may seem all confusing right now, but once you see some examples of it, you'll see that it is, well, actually, it is still kind of confusing. Uh, it's feasible. So, for example, here is a, a reaction. We have an alkyl iodide, and we're going to react it with some methanol, solvolysis, and this reaction requires us to heat it up a little bit to give it some energy so it can go. This reaction, um, we know that this is going to be an SN2 mechanism. We've got an alkyl halide, a secondary alkyl, sorry, an SN1, not an SN2. We have a secondary alkyl halide, which can do either SN1 or SN2, but because we have a protic solvent, we know that it's going to go by the SN1 mechanism. Now, at first, you might just predict popping off the iodide and putting on in its place a methoxide, OCH3. But you actually get two products in this reaction. So if we look at the mechanism, we can see how both products come about. Now, we know that even though there's two products, they're both being made by the SN1 mechanism because that's the only possibility when you're dealing with a polar product solvent. And the first step of the SN1 mechanism is always going to be loss of the leaving group to form a carbocation. So there's our carbocation. And... Whenever you're doing an SN1 mechanism and you make a secondary carbocation like we just did, you should always, the next thing that you should do is ask yourself, can I make this carbocation into a tertiary? Is it possible for me to move a hydride or an alkyl R- minus or a methyl a CH3- minus to make this molecule more stable? In this case, we have on this molecule, three hydrogens down here that I'm going to draw in. 
And when, oh, let me back it up. When you're doing shifting, like when you're trying to shift something to this carbocation to make it more stable, you can only shift from an adjacent carbon. So to stabilize this particular carbon, we can bring something from here or we can bring something from here. This carbon over here has got three hydrogens on it. Technically, we could move one of those hydrogens as, as a hydride shift onto this particular carbon right there. That would put our, it would resolve the positive charge here. It would put our positive charge up here. That's a primary carbon. Primary carbocations are really unstable. So we're not going to hydride shift from that end of the molecule because it makes a less stable carbocation. But we can move one of these methyl groups. We just take this whole entire methyl group and shift it over onto that carbon. When we shift that methyl group over, We end up with that carbocation. That is a tertiary carbocation. That carbocation is way more stable than the secondary. And that carbocation is going to proceed to react with the methanol in that SN1 mechanism. So the nucleophile is going to attack at that carbon. And we're going to get the transition state. with the positively charged oxygen and then we're going to use another methanol molecule to remove the hydrogen from the transition state and give us a stable product. And that's one of the things that we make in this reaction. And this is going to be a major product because it's coming from the most stable carbocation. The other product that we get in this reaction is just from the basic, uh, starting here, no rearrangement, nucleophile hitting at that particular spot, at that secondary carbocation. Just like you would predict if you didn't know anything about rearrangements. So we get the transition state and then we use another methanol molecule to abstract the hydrogen and convert the transition state to the product. Okay, and we're going to look at one more example of these. Let's just add, before we go into the next example, of these two products. This one's going to be the major product because it came from the most stable carbocation. It came via a mechanism that involved a tertiary carbocation. And this is the minor product of the reaction, but it's still produced in some significant quantity. And we're going to do one more example of an SN1 rearrangement mechanism.